Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is tea time with Miss Liz. That's right. We are here and it is an evening tea. And believe it or not, we are at the end of October. That's right. The last guest for October already. Then we're jumping into November. We are just flying this year. 2022 is just flowing like a good cup of tea. So we're going to do the disclaimer and all that good stuff and a little intro of the incredible guest. Jay Lynn Els is in the studio and she's a tea sipper. So imagine what kind of tea we're going to have tonight. So we're going to do this disclaimer and then we'll get her into the studio and we'll just sit and flow and spill a good old cup of tea. So the disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Times live shows. Miss Liz myself is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Times show posted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forth dialogue and opinions that may not represent my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the given time of airing. All tea time guests and audience participa participants are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussion for some where it may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to note that this show is engaging discussion forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in tonight's show in any aspect, Miss Liz, myself, I welcome you. Should you decide that this show is not made for you at this time, I respect that and I will see you at a later date at a, at a different show in the future. Now, I'm going to bring in my guest, and I'm going to read a little bit of her bio, and then we're going to sit, and we're going to spill some tea, and we're going to get to know about all these incredible books that she's written and all of that good stuff and all the social media kind of stuff. So we're going to just have a good old fun tea. So I'm going to bring in Jay Lynn Els in the studio, and I'm just going to do a little quick intro. Hi, Jay Lynn. Hello. It is nice to have you here, and it is nice that we are finally getting to have some tea with Tea Time. Yeah, we're steeping it real. <laughs> I've been waiting with that joke. I hope you haven't heard it. Sorry. I haven't. It's a new one. So it's a good one, right? That's what we need. We need something new to spill and flow. So I'm just going to do a little intro of you, Jalen. And then if you want, you can add whatever I've missed. And I'll just do a little intro. And then we will get in, spill some tea, hear about these incredible books that are in behind you, all the dragons and all that. I got some good questions for you, girl. <laughs> so Jalen Ellis is an award-winning author from Minnesota who self-published two historical fiction novels set in ancient Egypt. The Forgotten Aten Last Queen 2013, which was named an Indie Ep Editor's Choice Book for 2016 by the Historical Novel Society and The Forgotten Hair of the Heretic 2016, as well as science sci-fi novella Strangely Constructive Souls 2018. Through linking publishing, she authored an authorium. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Am I saying it right, Lynn? Arthurian. Arthurian. I, my tongue is dirty. It's rolling again. <laughs> yeah. Influence female driven fantasy trilogy. Descendants of Avalon, which we will be speaking about tonight. Lost. Uh, in 2018, Lost Daughters of Avalon in 2019, and Destiny of Avalon 2021. And her, her short stories, The Girl from the Haunted Woods, won two second place in the journey in the Fantastical Anthology Contest. And for more on Jay Lynn Ellis, you can check out all of her full bio on Miss Liz's Tea Time Facebook page, Instagram, and all that good stuff. So Jay Lynn, let's just get in there and let's just spill some kind of tea. And I love dragons, so you got me, girl. <laughs> Awesome. Well, first of all, thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here and I appreciate all your time. So thank you. 
Well, it's an honor to have you here. So let's get into the books right away. Let's jump into the books. So you started writing at what age, Jalen? <laughs> well, started writing was way back, you know, like in middle school and high school. I did a lot of just kind of fun writing, you know. I used to love the Christopher Pike books when I was in middle school and I'd be like, I want to write a scary story. And I loved those assignments in, in school where we'd write like some things, a short story, a little snippet. I always enjoyed that so much. And then in high school, I was a part of a writing club. And so we wrote about different characters that we had each month and so fun. I think that's kind of how I developed my character driven because it was just all about those characters and what they were doing and everybody in the writing club had a different character and then I started writing scripts because you know Star Trek the next generation used to take scripts from unsolicited from people I'm like oh I want to do that I love Star Trek I watch it all the time I can do that um I didn't finish a Star Trek script I finished an X-Files script um then I went to college and you know life progressed Eventually, after I had kids, I was writing and illustrating some children's books, which never, they didn't really get some traction until later. I do have a book that's coming out that's a children's book I'm excited about. Uh, but eventually, I just, I've always loved history, especially ancient history. And when I went to this King Tut exhibit, um, I'm trying to think when that was. I mean, I, I was an adult. It wasn't that long ago. Um, I saw all these images of King Tut and his wife and I thought they were so so interesting especially because nobody knew what happened to her what happened to her after King Tut dies nobody really knows where she's buried how long she lived after that I was like I want to tell this story and I have so many books on ancient Egypt let me tell you so as my own little self-proclaimed armchair archaeologist and Egyptologist, I decided to dive into some research and decided to write a book about her because I thought she was interesting. Um, then I, I still kind of had the writing bugs. So a few years later, I published a second book about her older sister and kind of that time when ancient Egypt was just under one god and it was a lot of turmoil and turbulence and what it was like being a woman, kind of a girl growing up back then and Eventually, I met up with some people at Inklings Publishing. I had a friend who was published through there, and so she kind of passed me a name to inquire with, and I sent them the first book in my trilogy, the Arthurian-inspired fantasy, and the rest is history. So yes, I then got my trilogy out, and that's kind of where my writing has been. So... Then have you been like fascinated with dragons? Because I see dragons like in the back. Like, where does <laughs> that come in? Because you talked about Egypt, but now I see the dragons mm -hmm. in the back. So where did that I, come in? I do have a dragon in book two of the trilogy that you'll get to meet. I think dragons are great. I love fantasy novels so much. Um, I love reading them. I love it when they have cool women and cool dragons. And so you get to meet a dragon in book two. And come to know her a little more in book three of the Avalon trilogy. So, yes, I finally felt cool enough to write a dragon. So, finally showed up in a book. <laughs> so, where does Star Trek come in? Because I've been watching your TikToks and, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm kind of a nerd. Um, you know, Star Trek was something the next generation back in, you know, 88, 89. Uh, we moved to a new place. I was in elementary school. It was very difficult for me to move because I was leaving all my friends. It was hard. It was a huge culture shock. Like the place I came from, 202 people was the population. I moved down to another town. It was 70,000. And, you know, now that's doubled and whatnot. But back then, that was huge. That was like, what is going on? Like we had, we had visited other places like bigger cities to go shopping and whatnot. But for me, that was like huge. And somehow we started watching Star Trek and I just felt like they're exploring all these new worlds, every single episode, you know, they have some cool female characters and, you know, there, we have a lot of Star Trek nerds in my family. And I didn't realize I was one until I was in fourth grade. And then my sci-fi bug just, just took off. So 
Yeah, I've been a long time fan. So what got you into tea? You know, I've been thinking about that. Like, I ha- I didn't get it really into it until I was an adult. And I think it was my friend took me out for my birthday one year when my kids were a bit younger. Right now, my kids are, to give you perspective here, my kids are 18 and 16. So, sorry, 19 and 16. So, you know, it was a long time ago. We went out to have some high tea and, you know, like little little cakes and whatnot. And I think that's when I began to notice the difference between bag tea and loose leaf tea, which is my total tea snobbery now. I don't I don't drink bag tea. I I only drink the loose leaf and I love to talk about how much loose leaf is superior. So yeah, I think it was just a fun time I had and I'm like, this is amazing. And now my kitchen's overflowing with whole bunches of tea, all types of tea, black tea, white tea, green tea, all sorts of chai. I love chai. So it's just all over my house now. So is chai your favorite tea? Well, chai is the easiest stuff to get if I go out with friends. So I don't drink coffee, but pretty much all of my friends do. So at least if we go out somewhere, I have an option. So it's, it's nice, hot or cold. But when I make stuff at home, it's usually more the the black tea, white tea, green tea variety. Yeah, I've seen some of your tea videos and I'm just like, oh my goodness, where did she get that kind? Like, I thought oh, I no. had a lot of tea and you beat me, like you beat me. <laughs> On my shelf? I know. It's yeah, kind of I was like, oh my God, she just opens the door, there's a tea. I was like, oh, what's she got in there? <laughs> All sorts of stuff. And, you know, now it's kind of accepted that book nerds and tea nerds kind of are, you know, all all in sync so a lot of like bookish items are also tea items so that's that's really fun i like that i like that you put book nerds and and <laughs> tea nerds right <laughs> you need both of them right to enjoy a good book oh yeah yeah we'll mesh all of that absolutely right so, so then i wanted to get into the avalon series yeah so you started writing them in 26 uh, 2018 right yeah, you know, it definitely, it usually takes me maybe about a year to write a book. So I had started it earlier. I had started it, there is, which is coming up, and I still don't even know if I'm doing it or not. November is National Novel Writing Month. And so that's actually how I finished my first book was through that process was, it's called NaNoWriMo. And each day you want to get like 2000 words written down. So that way, by the end of the month, the goal is to have like, you know, a whole book written. Now, let's, that's not to say it's a good book. It's just a first draft of a book. So that's kind of how I completed it. And the story had been percolating in my head for a little while, kind of about a wishing well and people beyond the wishing well. Maybe there is another land beyond the wishing well. Where do your wishes go if they have any influence on things? And somehow Arthurian legend kind of got spun into that because I really enjoy folklore and all those sorts sorts of old tales, you know, like I like ancient Egypt and stuff. I also love kind of those folk tales about legends. And I thought, you know, King Arthur has a lot of really cool women around him. Let's explore them a bit and also bring in, you know, kind of some teenagers from now who kind of get thrown into this, this battle of good and evil in the land of Avalon. So it was just something that all kind of coalesced together and became a story. And I hadn't planned on it being a trilogy at first. I mean, I was open to that. And so when I did sign with the publisher and they're like, hey, we want to make three. I'm like, oh, I got to come up with another story or two. (laughs) But it worked out in the end. I'm so proud of the other two books as well. Third book is totally like all over the place. I even bring in some ancient Egypt into the third book. So it's exciting. So you... The trilogy, that's three books, right? A collection of three? Yes. Yep. So it starts with the descendants of Avalon. That's kind of where our four main characters get introduced to this land of Avalon and the people in it. They have to go rescue one of their friends who's been captured by this evil wizard. And then the second one, we really kind of explore more of the world. That's Lost Daughters of Avalon. And we start exploring the world more. I I had to put a library in there because I'm like, I don't have a library in there yet. I need one. Cool libraries are so much fun in books. I think we can all name cool libraries from different fantasy books that we love. 
So it's like, first of all, got to get a library. And then kind of exploring a little bit more. And then the third book, Destiny of Avalon, just as this like ultimate struggle between and eat now I bring in um, like Jin, the the genies, and a little bit of that. And there's one who's bent on creating the spell which will destroy life as we know it. And they have to stop this person. And so the girls, all the teenagers go on their own different quests with some of the different people. So this is the first time they're really splitting up. And it's really about searching for that inner power within you. It's about friendship and connections, but it's also about finding your own inner strength and really letting that carry you through and believing in yourself. I mean, I really wanted to write stories about um, a different group of, like, a, a group of girls. Like, if you think about a lot of fantasy books, they're mostly guys with maybe a bookish smart girl on the side. I wanted to have a bunch of different girls. I wanted them to make jokes and make mistakes and be a little silly at times. You know, they didn't have to be the book smart one. So that was one of my driving factors is first getting a group of girls who young readers can maybe relate to a little more. There's some more diversity there in terms of personality and also bringing in some cool um, women from, from history as well. So, and then dragons. So well, you got it all in one, right? Think of perfect cup of tea. <laughs> it's all in there. <laughs> so, are you into the new uh, dragon, the the, th the Thrones of Dragons? I think it's called. Oh, um, no, I don't. I don't watch House of Dragons. My son says I should. I don't. I don't watch Game of Thrones. Um, they're a little too graphic for me. I would say I'm a bit more in La La Land. I like not so much violence in in my stuff so no i don't i don't watch those um right now i'm actually watching a lot of disney plus so <laughs> so what what did you think of the dragon from the never ending story because i'm sure you, know, you watched yeah. that one. Oh, <laughs> i watched that one and i thought how cool it would be to ride him because he was so so silly but i think the biggest heartbreak and i love how people are noticing this now like the, our generation is like bringing this back how you know Atre was trying to get his horse through the mud and it wouldn't go and that was like the saddest part of a movie like the most traumatic scene in our childhood I just think it's funny how it's all coming back but yeah I thought that dragon was cool I thought he was a little strange like some of his face like I can you know now I know it's just like the special effects and whatnot, but he was a different looking dragon than I was used to, but I was still like, I want to go, I want to ride him. I want to be on that dragon's back. Yeah. He was a cool dragon. That was like one of my favorite movies with my kids as well. I was just like, when, when, when I was doing your promotions for the tea time, I, the never ending story came to me right away. I don't know yeah. what it was. I was just like, Oh my God. Like, yeah. Never ending story for, because yeah, you also, put it on the stuff. Yeah. I heard. Yes, it. I did. And I, 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 I don't know. Songs are called to me when I'm doing the promotions for each of the tea times. And that one just came to me like right away. Never ending story. I could just see you riding this dragon. And I was just like, oh, my no, gosh, that is who she is. Like, I and was you're, so the never ending story, that. right? Because you also do book reviews. So for the listeners and, and that out there, what is a book reviewer? So I review books uh, mostly for the Historical Novel Society. So they're really historical based either fiction, nonfiction, fantasy. People will submit like either indie authors or professionally published will submit to our group. Um, the reviews are free, but it's basically volunteer time. So if we have time to read a book, we'll definitely select it. So I usually stick with a lot of ancient history or fantasy. Um, I'm really kind of getting into some Viking um, type stories dig it into my Viking roots as a Swede. Um, so it's something that, you know, we read these books and the first part of the review, we kind of summarize what the book's about to really get people to understand quickly, you know, within like four sentences, maybe what the book is about, draw you in. And then we leave our review. Did we find it historically accurate? Did we find the characters interesting? Was the plot plausible? Did I've noticed sometimes like modern expressions pop in. I mean, you'd be surprised. The Like, for instance, I was reading a book that was set in like 1930s 
and someone referenced serial killers. And also being a true crime fan and watching a lot of forensic files, I know that the term serial killer wasn't termed till the 70s. Like that wasn't a term at all. People used a different term back then. So things like that, if I catch that, it just kind of takes me out. And so that's something that maybe I'll comment on. Like, you know, I felt like maybe some of the atmosphere was great, but the, um, the way characters spoke, the references they used kind of took me out of the storyline. So we really do look at things with the historical lens and because we love historical fiction and Mm -hmm. nonfiction. um, And there's a lot to learn from our history. I think that sometimes people forget that we should be mindful of. So we don't repeat a lot of these horrible things that have happened in the past. Again, I try and keep things a little lighter. I don't read a lot of the kind of world war ii tragedy books because i just want something light and happy at the end sometimes so, so yeah that's so what what, what, what gives you like a five like if you read a book what what is it about that book that will, you'll give a five for one thing is definitely the prose how the author writes the story what are some of the allusions or metaphors does it really is it something that i can really feel that i can really like i feel like i can just reach out and touch Another thing is the world building. Is this a world I'd want to go to? I mean, there's some worlds I don't think I'd last very long in. Um, And some that's like, oh my gosh, I would love to go visit that. Or even little pockets of dangerous worlds that are just this beauty that you just... One of the books I recently read is Six Crimson Cranes. And there's just this lovely storytelling You know, you get this map at the beginning, and so you can kind of track where the character goes to these different lands that are kind of inspired by um, Asian mythology. And it's a world I'm not familiar with, but I felt very comfortable reading. Like, I felt I was very immersed in that storyline, and I loved it. And also characters. I, I have to somehow really kind of relate to this character. One thing that I just can't get behind is characters who either don't have a learning curve, like they're instantly learning, like, oh, I've always been a warrior in my blood. I can just fight all these bad guys now with a sword. Can't stand that. Um, And, you know, also if the characters hold themselves accountable, if they make mistakes, maybe at first they don't own it, but if they eventually learn to own it, I think it's very important that characters learn and grow and take responsibility for themselves. So kind of the long answer what I'm always looking for character development the amazing world building and really how that author speaks her language or his language and brings all of it to life well and I think it's really important right because you want to be able to almost be in the story when Mm -hmm. you're reading a story right you don't want to read and then you're like where am I going with this like what am I doing here and it's almost like you said like I I was a warrior I'm going to fight everything but you're not building up how that warrior got to the fighting part. So yeah. it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So for any of the listeners and viewers out there that are listening or will watch the replay later, what message do you have for them as a book reviewer for stories? I think it's be confident in your voice. If it's something maybe that doesn't speak to me, that doesn't mean it's not going to speak to someone else. Everyone out there has an amazing voice. And it's unique to you. Like your life experiences are so different from mine. Like if we were given the same plot outline, here's your character, here's how they have to go. Write the story. You know, we would write completely different stories because I see things differently than you. I express myself in different ways. You can see I use my hands a lot when I talk. I And I think that's so fascinating is how many wonderful stories are out there that can only be told by the person writing them. There is no one else on this earth who thinks like you, who talks like you and who will bring a story to life like you. So know that even if you put it out there and it's beautiful, if it doesn't speak to me, that's okay. It'll speak to someone else. Not everyone is going to love your book and know that's just the beauty of the diversity of this world. It's the beauty that makes you different and me different and be proud of what you've written because if it's out there, you've written a book, man. That's amazing. So that's what I would say is just know that not everyone's going to like it, but be proud of what you've put out there because 
Only you can tell that story. Now I want to get into Lynn. I want to get into the nerdy mom because I, I, I thought that was cute. When you put that in your bio, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. She's, she's my cup of tea. Like let's get nerdy here. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So what would you like to learn about my nerd? So what is it about a nerdy mom for the listeners out there that want to know what a nerdy mom is? So, um, there are moms who sometimes embarrass their kids. Um, you know, and my kids kind of laugh at it. They used to rate me and my brother are huge Star Trek nerds, huge Star Wars nerds for like conventions. We do cosplay, which is we dress up like certain characters. I have like a Star Trek uniform. So sometimes my son would rate people as zero to mom, mom being the nerdiest. And then he got to know my brother a little. So now it's zero to my brother, you know, just like. We've kind of gotten my son into Harry Potter and some of the more fantasies. And my daughter's more into Lord of the Rings. But I could not get a single child into Star Trek. And I don't know what it is, but we got some into Star Wars. We got them into Lord of the Rings. Star Trek, nobody else in this family will touch it except me. I don't get it, but I will still wave that flag loud and proud and be my nerdy self. (laughs) And I love that because that shows your authenticity, right? It shows that I am a nerd. This is who I am, you know? Yeah. And I, and I think it's really important as a mom, you know, that we have to play around and have fun with our kids. And that's what we're made for. We're here to embarrass our kids. I, <laughs> I do it all the time with my kids when I go shopping. They're like, Mom, what are you doing? I'm just like, oh, have a little fun. Come on, laugh a little. I know. <laughs> Sometimes I'll do a little dance in the aisles. My kids are running away. I'm like, what's, what's wrong with dancing out in the world? It's, it's great. I think it's important that, you know, kids see you do have a personality and it's okay to be different from other people. You know, I think that's a good way to show them, you know, you're, you're a unique person too. let everyone see that because you're amazing too. Just like your mom is cool and nerdy. So are you. It's in your blood. Just embrace it. <laughs> Cause you know, when you have your kids, you're going to be that nerdy mom. <laughs> yep. Yep. So let's get back into the tea, Lynn. Okay. You're a tea sipper. So what is a tea sipper? I like, I just really like trying new things, first of all, but I also like trying different types of tea. So I tried recently, I got like a puer cake, which is like a circle. I hadn't had that before, but I, I got some and I tried it and it's really, it's good. It's a little smokier than I usually have, but I just like trying all different things. So I don't just limit myself to the ones I'm necessarily familiar with, like flavored blacks. I like fruitier stuff. I like, like chocolatey stuff, but I want to, I want to try a lot of different stuff. So if I'm driving around and I see a tea store, I'm going to go stop and have some tea because that sounds amazing. And let's try something new because, you know, all stores have all different like distributors and different blends that they do. So it's really just me trying a whole bunch of new stuff, really, and just labeling it with tea. And I love that you said that, Lynn, new stuff, because that's as soon as I see the word new, I'm like, that's where I'm going. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and then my kids are like, Mom, your allergies. And I'm like, oh, okay, let's just step back one or two. Go read the ingredients and give me a thumbs up if it's good. Then I'll come okay. and I'll check it. Because <laughs> I have a lot of allergies with food and coconut and stuff, all that good stuff, oh. right? So a lot of tea use coconut and use Mm -hmm. the nuts and all that so i have to be careful with that but i'll just see a nice pretty box and i'll be like oh i need it i got it and and then my kids are like mom you can't drink it and i'm like oh okay (laughs) i i got a box of tea at the mall of america at a tea store and i kind of saw this but i thought maybe inside it would be different but the outside is all written in chinese okay and it's these two cute little bunnies and on the inside there's a whole bunch of little tea satchels but that's still all written in Chinese. So I don't know what these flavors are. Thankfully, my supervisor at work does speak Chinese. So I can be like, what's this one before I put it in my tea? Or I could just play like, you know, roulette. Like, let's see what this is and see if I can right. taste it. Um, so, yeah, that's just, you know, trying something. I thought it looked cute. I thought it looked fun. So I brought it home and I, I'm I'm lucky enough. I don't have any of those types of allergies. I mean, on the, on the other side, I get motion sick super easy. I have amazing friends, and they took me up to do this virtual reality Star Trek thing. Oh, It was so cool, but 
by the end, I got extremely motion sick. I, <laughs> I can like, imagine. I was like, guys, I swear I loved it so much, but I'm sorry. I'm so sick. I need to lay on the ground for a little while. <laughs> so, you know, we all have our things, but yeah. That's awesome. So what would you like to tell the viewers and listeners out there about your previous books that you wrote? So... Again, I'm a big fan of ancient history, so I wrote the ones about ancient Egypt because I really want to focus on women's voices and letting them be heard because you see pictures, but you don't always hear what they have to say because, you know, a lot of history isn't written by women that's preserved anymore. So that's something that really motivated me, motivated me to write those stories. Now, my science fiction novella, that was fun because it was a plot that came to me in a dream. Never oh. had that before. So our local library was having a Frankenstein contest, kind of a contest because it was like Mary Shelley's um, Frankenstein's anniversary. And so they were putting out a call that said, hey, write a short story which with some Frankenstein themes in it, you know, monsters and whatnot. And I had a dream about a human zoo on an alien world which may not sound like it hits the theme right away, but when you kind of bring in that focus of trust and monsters around you and looking different and acting different, I was like, Hey, this might work. So it had been a while since I'd watched a lot of science fiction. I always say, you know, if you're, if you're going to write the genre, read it. And I haven't read a lot of it recently. So I kind of dove back in for a little while got that story going and submitted it. It, it didn't take any places, but I still self-published it because I was pretty proud that, you know, I think this is cool. I may write another one. I have a few different ideas next, kind of with some of those characters off in space somewhere. But yeah, that was crazy. I just woke up. I'm like, I need to write this down right now so I don't forget. Um, so yeah, that was the novella that I wrote. And then I wrote a short story for another contest, which was the girl from the haunted woods. It is very modern as it kind of takes place during the pandemic. So there's people wearing masks and that story came about because I was in like a zoom meeting with my publisher, I think, and some other authors. And I was like, you know, we're in an age where we can't see who's behind these masks anymore. Yeah. Cause we're all covered up. So I was like, Hmm, let's run with that. So, you know, this, this young girl meets someone else who comes out of the woods. Um, she doesn't really have any friends. She connects with this person, but they're always wearing masks. So maybe what's behind there. So that's kind of where that idea came from. Just some random comment I made. You never know where story ideas are going <laughs> to pop up. So <laughs> that was kind of the rest of my stories. Now I'm kind of sitting here waiting um, I'm in that phase right now where I've submitted my book to my publisher. It's my children's book. I'm very excited for it to come out. Um, so it's with them right before, kind of before it actually comes out to the public. So I'm kind of in this limbo phase right now of writing. Like I kind of know what I want to do, but I also want to see this book come out and I'm just really excited and anxious. So, so is this going to be your first children's book? It will. It will. It'll be the first children's book that I've, published and it's about a little elephant who loves ballet and she joins her first ballet class so it's kind of about the love of dance and how dancers come in all different shapes and sizes so well that's really an empowering message as well right i think it's something that's needed especially for young girls to hear that even if you don't fit like what media is telling you if you love it if you feel this in your soul do it don't yeah. let other people tell you no. So I think it's something that I hope when it comes out, little girls can see themselves in and be like, I want to be like this character. I want to dance because I love it too. And I'm not going to listen to anyone else. I'm going to listen to my heart and feel that music and just let it flow. I love that. I love that. And we need, we need that, right? We need more messages like that for our girls. And I'm seeing a theme with all of your books and the <laughs> empowerment of women the, the history of women, you know, because there are some really incredible, strong women from the history. And it's like you said earlier, Lynn, it's a, we, we need to re know our history and get to know the history. So we're not repeating the history, right? It's very important. And 
some of the stuff that comes out in the media, I'm like, what century are we in? You know? <laughs> right? I'm like, didn't we already go through? Didn't we already fight this battle? It was just, you know, growing up when we did. Um, I, I, I'm classifying you in my category. Um, I, you know, I was a, a child in the '80s, teenager in the '90s. There wasn't a lot of media that portrayed women in a strong light. We were mostly the, you know, damsels in distress, kind of the airheads, not the main characters, certainly not the ones who wielded the swords. And I really wanted that in books. You know, I wanted to have those. And there's just so few and far between. Like, you know, Princess Leia in Return of the Jedi, she's just fighting down there with all the boys. And then I watch another movie and I'm like, why isn't that girl like that? Why is she just sitting in the corner screaming? And it was funny because we were watching The Princess Bride with, with my daughter. And... It's the part where they're in the woods and Wesley's being attacked by the the rodents of unusual sizes. And Princess Buttercup just stands on the corner and cringes. And she's like, why isn't she doing anything? And I'm like, welcome to my world, girl. This is what I grew up with, you know? Just like when I was a child back then, I couldn't comprehend why they couldn't do anything. You know, it just didn't make sense to me. Because I'm like, girls can be capable of stuff. So right? yeah, that's kind we, of where we can speak up too. We can we can do a good yeah. you know. <laughs> but if she could pick up that sword and stab that R U S S R O U S. So sorry if I said that wrong. <laughs> but <laughs> um, you know, it's just something that was one of my main motivations for writing is I it's characters I wished I had seen when I was growing up, seen more of them. Yeah. Well, you ain't far off. I'm a, I'm I'm in the seventies, but <laughs> okay, in the eighties, okay. in the eighties, I was I was going to high school in that. Uh, okay, so, good. But no, we're, we're you're not you're not far off. I was a little early seventies baby, so nice, nice. I'm glad yeah. I, I I guessed correctly. I, sometimes I assume stuff, and I'm like, you know what? I don't mean to assume that with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, and I think that's what we need to do, right? Is we need to bring back the history the, and and mention this: why weren't the women able to speak up and do these things? You know, when we were growing up, but it's almost like history is repeating itself, and it's like, whoa, 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 we're going backwards here. Let's go forward. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and I I love how there's so many new voices in storytelling now. There's so many more, um, you know black authors and native american authors and just so many other cultural aspects that are coming out that i was not exposed to and i love it like i love reading all those cultural stories because it's just so unique and beautiful in its own way and it's fresh for me it's like wow this is so cool you don't realize all the you know different challenges other people had to go through until you get to a piece of their history too. So I have really loved reading a lot of the new books that have come out. Like I mentioned earlier, some Asian mythology, Japanese mythology, you know, Chinese mythology, stuff like that. I just eat that stuff up. I think it's so great to have this out there. But then at times in society and government, it's like, what's going on? Yeah. Are we not, right? are we not paying attention. What's up? So, yeah. That's yeah, when, we, that's when we have to put a magical book. dragon in there in, in yeah. never ending story, right? Let's, we let's need bring... to have him sail on down and rescue us. Yeah. And then we'll go get our swords and we'll come back and be like, yo, this is how it's going to be. <laughs> so. Right? Let's fight it off. Like, yes. <laughs> well, that's amazing. I want to I wanna get, before we're running out of time, we're getting close to, we've got a couple minutes left, but we're running out of time here. And before we run up out of time, I want to get to know what your T is, Lynn. So if I give you the word T, what words would you give me for the T-E-A, starting with those letters? For T, um, I think about thoughtfulness. For E, I think else because of my last name or else, what else? I mean, I've just heard that growing up for so long. A of course would stand for awesome because I love the word awesome. So I hope you all have your healthy dose of awesome sauce today. <laughs> I love it because it is, it's like, it is who you are, Lynn. You're that nerdy mom, right? So you like the yes. awesomeness. Like, come on kids, let's get awesome here. Let's get of all groovy, right? Of course I am. Of course, we is, all are. It, and else is nice. It's, it's part of you. It is who you are. It's your name, right? Yeah. And thoughtfulness, I, I can see that. 
you know, being really... I think it says a lot about how people are thoughtful of other people in the world and mindful of things. And yeah, just popped into my head. So, right. Well, and that's what it is, right? Our teas are what we serve. So, and that's why I asked you what your tea was. So, <laughs> and I love finding out what all of my guest teas are. So, if you'd like to know more about all of the different kinds of teas out there, just check out Miss Liz's YouTube channel or over 40 podcast stations, we are out there. So you can hear all of these incredible tea times out there on multiple podcast stations as well. And that, and I'm working on getting it out in different ways as well. So then what would you like to see happen with these books, the Avalon? Would you like to see a movie series from them or? Uh, oh, well, like, well, of course. Oh, I play mean, for the kids at school. Or... <laughs> I'm just waiting for Mr. Spielberg to give me a call. <laughs> Hello. Um... <laughs> But I think the main goal is just having them read and just having them touch someone's heart, have someone say, I could relate to this, or, you know, I really felt that moment just to have, have it out there and people see something in it. Like that was my goal is I hope that people read it and they feel inspired and they feel braver and they feel like there's something special in them too, that they can bring out to the world. So while, of course, movies are the goal, and of course, in the contract, I will need to be in the movie somewhere because I do have a theater background. So I'm just saying, I got some acting experience. Um, really, the goal is just, I want people to enjoy it, and I want people to feel something from it. So I hope if you do pick up the book, it inspires you or you know encourages you in some way. So or you just like you... one of the characters, or the dragon. Right? Be a dragon. Everybody should be a dragon. Be I think dragon. dragons are dragons are cool, you know. And and I'm I'm like you. I like the softer side of stuff mm -hmm. because I find that the magic, right, the, the magical part of the dragon. Like I, I think I watched Braveheart too. Was it with a dragon? Brave. They, oh, yeah, yeah. And they I'm had thinking. dragons, right? And I think that was in the early. 90s that movie was made or early, yes. late 80s it's it's um i think it's a different because i'm thinking when you say braveheart i think of the movie my husband used to watch every day when he was growing up in college the one with mel gibson oh no not that one <laughs> okay so maybe it's not braveheart i know there's a dragon there's a bunch but of I know dragons what you're talking about yeah um uh, yeah but i can't think of the name right now i'm totally blanking yeah i'm, I'm just seeing dragons all over like I'm like dragon, 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 dragon. Now my son's a big dragon collector in that as well. So it's pretty cool. That's why I'm oh, like, like, oh, I love dragons. So then before we wrap up, we've got a couple minutes. We've got a little bit more than 15 minutes left. So what message would you like to give to the youths out there about writing and book reviews and all that good stuff? Let's give them some tips and some tools that they can take home. I think it's important to stay positive with book reviews unless a book has really really upset me and offended me to my core which doesn't happen often you know just try and keep it positive um you know someone's put their heart and soul into it and just be mindful that if it's not your cup of tea it's not your cup of tea that's okay you, you're you have a right to not enjoy that book um when it comes to writing one thing i have to remind myself often is that sometimes i picture things in my head but I don't always explain it all. So make sure you have like all those movements, all those um, conversations. Don't just assume people understand where you're going with something. Sometimes I am the worst at telling jokes because I will start laughing before I've told the punchline because it's in my head and I'm already laughing. But I haven't told them yet, so no one else can share that with me. So make sure when you're writing, you don't assume things. Um, take your readers on that journey with your characters, explore things together with them. I really try and let my characters take the reins of the story. Like I'm, I'm not a plotter. I don't have these expansive outlines. I have some, some writer friends who do, and that's what works for them. For me, I just let my character kind of take the reins and go. And so I learn a lot with them when I'm, walking through my worlds and describing things and enjoy what you're writing yourself. You know, you want readers to enjoy it, but are you enjoying it while you're writing it? So that'll definitely come across on the pages. So yeah, I'd say definitely keep it positive. Enjoy what you're doing. Be sure, again, don't assume people know where you're going. Take them someplace new 
and make it be fun. Awesome. So I want to get into the, before we wrap up, I want to get into your favorite color. I asked you what your favorite color was and you gave me purple. So why the color purple for? I just think it's really pretty, I guess. Um, and of course, you know, the, I live in Minnesota. So, you know, our football team is the Minnesota Vikings. We have the purple people eaters. Oh. I don't know if it was just, they, <laughs> that's what they used to be in the seventies. Right. So I don't know if that was just a subtle thing growing up, but strangely, my husband, who's a huge Packer fan, his favorite color is also purple. So it's like purple just is a good color. It's a color sometimes of royalty. It was a color back in the day where only wealthy people could afford it because of the dyeing process and everything. The, the ingredients were so rare. So sometimes wearing purple, I just feel a little more special than other days because I'm like, I'm going to be a queen today. Let's go. So <laughs> yeah, I just like purple all around. And I asked you one, one, what word would describe you as a person? And you gave me two words. I actually noticed that today when I went back and I was like, oh, she gave me that word too. And everyone was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> so you gave me two words. Do you remember what those two words were? Fantastical? Uh, cool. No, I got nerd, nerd, nerdalistic. Nerdalicious. There we go. Because everything is good with delicious at the end. I'm just, just throwing that out there. And no, I, my memory is so bad. I'm sorry. And then I got opti optimistical. Optimistical, yes. Because I was talking about positivity. Yes, I, I like to look at things with a positive outlook. So yes, optimistical. I wanted to come up with fun words for you. Not like everyday words. I wanted to add a little spice to the ending, if you will. So adding a little bit of that spicy herbal tea to the end of those those words so yeah um they're delicious because like i said everything is better with delicious and yeah optimistical keep it fun but keep it positive i love that you said different because i love different because that's what my <laughs> does is different right i love when we express ourselves differently and we add that extra spice and that extra little sugar to it right we do that little twist you know it's yeah. it's it's you don't do plots, but it's almost like there's a little plot coming into it, right? I'm going to give you this word and I'm going to figure me out a little. And the reason yeah. that I asked you those one word to describe yourself is because sometimes we look at ourselves and we don't actually know who we are. But when someone asks us to describe ourselves, then we kind of look within, right? It's almost like a cup of tea when we start looking within. So that's the reason that I asked that question is what describes you because then it makes you look inwards and you're like, hmm. Right. And I love yeah. that you gave me two. <laughs> I'm glad you <laughs> let me. And it's interesting, too, if you think about it with tea, because tea leaves look different in different stages of life, if you will, when they're dry, when they're steeping, when they're wet afterwards. It's kind of funny to see how some may change color. Some may bloom and open up. Some may curl up a little. I think that's always fun to kind of watch what tea. That's why I film those videos, because I think it's. Like sometimes when they're just steeping and the leaves are going up and down and the thing, I just think it's so mesmerizing and pretty. And yeah, tea is very interesting. Well, it's almost like the flow of the, the, the run of the leaves, right? As mm -hmm. they go up and they go down and everything. Because I noticed that on your videos on TikTok. Because she is on TikTok, guys. So if you want to yep. find her, <laughs> give her a follow on TikTok. And I noticed that when you do those, the, the loose leaf teas and the flow of it and everything... There's almost like a message, you know, you kind of like the picture of the tea giving you a story. And yeah, I like, like how the just, leaves flow, right? I, it feels very calming to me. You know, like this morning I made some tea and, and did a video with it because I was very cold. But, you know, when I was watching, I was just like, oh, this is so neat how it's just going up and down. And that was, um, let me think, it was a black tea, but it was a different, like a mate tea. And then some of them, they just kind of float, like just kind of in the middle or some of them settle pretty quickly. So I think that's kind of fun to watch, kind of like how people watch a lava lamp or they have those sticks they flip over and, the, yeah. you know, I think it's kind of fun. Like there's beauty in the everyday that sometimes we don't always see. And that's why I kind of like making those tea videos. I hope other people like it. I do get likes, but I hope they don't get sick of it. I just think it's something and it's an everyday beautiful that, you know. 
stop and take time and notice. It's, oh, I love that. I love that message. We all need to stop and take time and notice a lot of stuff. No one notice the good stuff. Stop the bad stuff. We don't need to pay attention to the, the bad stuff. Pay attention to the good stuff. Because I find that the bad is overtaking the good. So let's get some good to overtake the bad. And let's bring back some old history stories. So yes. what is one book that has changed your life? Oh, you know, when I was in college, I read the book Ishmael um, by Daniel Quinn. And it really was something that flipped the narrative on how we look at how our history is told and what we assume about society and how society is structured. I was just, it's just like my mind just exploded. Like, oh my gosh, all these new ideas. So Ishmael is one of a very impactful story in my college years that I read. And, and it helped me look at our history and our storytelling differently. So that's, that's one of the main things I got out of it. It, it was just, and it's a crazy plot. You think it wouldn't work because it's mostly telling it's, or it's, you know, it's like, you don't really get into it. Like there's not a lot of world building. There's not like, you know, you don't always walk. It's just people talking. You know, it's a lot of talk, but it's just so, like, cerebral. It just, just, that typically doesn't work for me. But that book is one that I have on my shelf. My son read it for one of his classes. I'm like, oh, I have that book. I can give it to you. Um, Yeah, I would highly recommend that one. Ishmael by Daniel Quinn. So that was one that changed your life? I would say. It just gave me a new outlook on things that I just hadn't, I hadn't thought about before. I liked having all these new thoughts in my head. So, so before we wrap up, I want to get into time travel. Oh. Few, I want to really get digging because for me, T is the past, the present and the future. And you mentioned time travel in your notes that when we communicated <laughs> back and forth. So I was just like, I want to know how she feels about time travel. Okay. So I'm pretty particular about time travel. Like, So I watched a lot of Quantum Leap. I kind of believe in that theory that if you go back in time and shoot your grandfather, then you would never have been born to go back in time and shoot your grandfather. So it's one of those, like, I don't like people going back in time and necessarily changing things. So let's put it this way. The, The more recent Avengers movie where they went back in time to get the Infinity Stones, didn't like that at all that was terrible that was terrible i'm very i'm very like if you're gonna go back in time and you're gonna show that things have changed make it so it feels like this change is something we've always known but we didn't realize it was different you know make it like there was a quantum leap episode that stuck out in my mind where he went back in time he was a bodyguard for jfk and at the end he's upset he's like jfk still died but then um al says but you don't remember in the original history his wife died too and i was like oh chills (laughs) you know i did not know that something like that is what i think is really good so time traveling you have to be careful with i feel like um i don't you know just make sure if you do it you respect the past that you're going back into. Don't just go back there and be like, yo, how's it going, homies? You know, like that's that's not gonna fly. <laughs> so just respect the history and make it so we go along with that change. We don't really notice what's changing until it's like that big reveal at the end. So yeah, I'm pretty per- particular about time travel. <laughs> yeah, I now, wanted to know how you felt about that because for me, the Back to the Future series kind of really oh, yeah. threw me off because they, they, they always went back and changed things. You know, yeah, so how could you go to back? make it better? And then, and then other things happen and other things. Happen. And I'm just like, leave it alone. Like, just leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> how can you get back to that original history? Because you've changed it. So it's not the original history anymore. Yes, I understand where you're coming from with that. That that makes sense. I mean, I gave it a pass in the 80s because I was a bit younger and I thought it was fun. But when you look at it now, it's like he talks about that skewed timeline that they yeah. can't go back to. And yet they keep going back to it. <laughs> You know, right? they change things. It's different. You can't go back. So, well, as a kid, right, when we watch a movie, we're like, oh, that's so cool. And then when we get older, we watch it again. And we're like, why did you do that? 
yeah wait that doesn't work <laughs> what <laughs> why you know but as a child we're like oh that's so cool the cars going back in the in the past in the future in the present it was cool right it was. and then it i was. watched it at, when i got older and i was like well why did they do that for <laughs> <laughs> you ruined my childhood now now that i know it doesn't work <laughs> Agree. <laughs> right. So any final words you have, Lynn, for the viewers and listeners out, out there? And where can they grab all of your books and where can they find you? So as you mentioned, I'm on a few social medias. I enjoy making TikTok videos because I think they're fun. So most places you can find me, Jalen Els Author. Some places like Facebook, I'm T Sip and Nerdy Mom, as well as my website is T Sip and Nerdy Mom.com. I just thought that was a fun rhyme. Um, my books can be found, they can be found on Amazon, but also from my publisher's website, inklingspublishing.com. And as the holidays are coming up, they do have bundle sales. So they may sell my trilogy all in a set and give you a little discount. So just be checking for that. Um, so yeah, you can get it at inklingspublishing.com or Amazon, Barnes and Noble, things like that. You can also get them from major retailers and yeah. That's where you find me. I'm all over the place. If, you, if you'd like to follow, like you said, you're watching me on Instagram. I try and mix it up, you know, Instagram and, tw and Twitter. I try to post different things. So you don't always get the same thing from all of my sites. So Twitter, I do a lot of like, I post a lot of my book reviews from Goodreads and retweet. Re I don't like that word. Retweet stuff from my friends. <laughs> I'm not good at saying that. Word. Try and say that five times there. <laughs> retweet. No. <laughs> it's not like tweety bug. Tweet, tweet, tweet. <laughs> do you want to say, before we wrap up, we got less than two minutes here. Do you want to give a little bit on this site here that I found? Oh, yeah. So that is where um, I do the reviews. That's where all the reviews are posted. Um, I'm a member of the society. You can look me up there as well. But there's just so many great interviews. There's so many great books you can find. You can search by like genre. You can search by authors. I think there's a lot of stuff to discover. Like I'll be reading through it and I'll find a book and I'll be like, oh, I got to highlight that. I got to check that out. A lot of our reviewers are very knowledgeable about history. So they really are good at analyzing and reviewing these books. And I find a lot of really cool books I need to go pick up. It's fun to explore. And if you love reading history that's a great place to find a bunch of books we have editor's choice books like at one of my books got that it was an indie book so it was in the indie section but editor's choice books are ones that we really lift up and are like this is a great example of writing and bringing history alive definitely give this one if if you're thinking of like this genre this is a great example so that's that's a fun place to go if you love reading and you love history Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I want to thank you so much, Jalen, for joining me in the studio and sharing about your books, about time travel, about dragons and <laughs> nerdy mom and tea, because that's exactly what we did. We had it all tonight on the table. We had a different type of tea. And we are done for October. <laughs> so that's right. We are going in what? November. I can't believe that we're already going in November. But I will be back November 3rd with Ness Brines from Germany. And she'll be speaking about dope and damage. That's right. She has a podcast <laughs> and we'll be talking about that. And she's also blind. So we will be talking about blindness a little bit as well. So we have some really incredible things. So be sure to tune in for that. But that will be a morning tea. So you'll have to get up early, grab your tea, grab your croissant or your crumpet and come and join us for a cup of tea. And again, Lynn, thank you so much for joining me tonight on Tea Time. And thank you to all the listeners and viewers out there. Please let me know. Give some feedback that you think 2023 is coming and there is a lot of changes coming for tea time with Miss Liz for the new year. So be sure to check that out. And I will see you again in December if you're available, Lynn, for the reunion show. That's right. There's Ooh. a reunion show December 22nd. The All date right, is thank there, you. So we will be seeing everyone December 22nd. We'll see who comes back and surprises us with some surprises. So awesome. Then, thank you so much. Thank you for having me and everyone. Thank you for, for listening and being here and being present. And I appreciate it. Awesome. 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 So I will see everybody November 3rd, 10 a.m. for a new cup of tea. And we will make a difference one cup of tea at a time. <laughs>